Have you ever been curious about a MIDI foot controller? I have, but the cost, even for a used one, is out of my price range. However, there are other options. For the low, low price of $50, I was able to get the key mechanism from a Yamaha HS7 electric piano. This lets me have the enjoyment of building the foot controller myself with the hard part already done. And if I find out I don't actually like using a MIDI foot controller, the investment was minimal. The first thing I did after receiving the key mechanism was to download the service manual for the Yamaha HS7 to see what kind of electrical interface I'd be dealing with. And here we have the needed information on page 121 of the manual. PK20L is the main PCB of the foot controller, and PK20H is the PCB on the right that connects to the higher note pedals. The EXP1 PCB I don't have. This is not a problem. This PCB simply provides connections for an expression and sustain pedal, which I think I could figure out myself easily enough. With the goal of turning this key mechanism into a full-on MIDI pedal controller, I could have chosen one of two paths. First, I could have figured out how to talk to the microcontroller chip already on the PCB over what looks like some kind of synchronous serial interface. Or I could go with option two, remove this microcontroller and replace it with my own. I went with option two. I couldn't find the data sheet for the controller already on the PCB, and I would have to program my own controller to talk to it anyway. So it just made more sense to pull it out and do my own key matrix reading solution. And reading a key matrix is a fairly simple thing to do anyway. Now to do the work. First step is to pull the main PCB out of the key mechanism. It came out easily with all the screws removed. To get the original chip out, I used a hot air rework station. Heating the chip gently until all the solder was liquid, and the chip just about fell out on its own. I have no way of testing it, but I think this chip might still be good, so I put it away in case someday someone might want it. Next was to figure out where I wanted to put my perf board. The original chip wasn't a standard pitch, so I couldn't just reuse the existing holes in the PCB. I think about there should do it. So this is the schematic for the perf board I made for the new microcontroller. The original microcontroller chip is represented here, with the columns and rows for the key matrix connected here. This 5 volt connection supplies the pull up resistors for the key matrix already on the PCB, which simplifies the wiring. Other features on this PCB, in-circuit programming, a USB socket for power, dip switches for selecting the MIDI address, connections for switches used to shift the octave of the pedals, the MIDI connector, the connectors for an expression pedal and a sustain pedal, and finally a crystal so that the controller can output MIDI commands at the correct baud rate. All this uses every last pin on the microcontroller. Now let's build it. I always like starting projects with any and all chip sockets that the project might require. This gives a solid reference point for the rest of the build. After that will be the dip switches to set the MIDI address. And the crystal to run the oscillator on the microcontroller. the in-circuit programming header and its connections to the microcontroller, power and ground connections. Note that this perf board has bus bars along the edge for easier distribution of power and ground, power filter and capacitor, and the resistors for the MIDI connection. And with that, we are done with the parts on the perf board and can start connecting it to the PCB and the key mechanism. I'm temporarily mounting the perf board to one of the screw holes on the PCB so that it doesn't walk around while I made the connections. And the next step is basically to wire up all the connections from the perf board to the PCB to match the schematic. After this was done, temporary standoff was removed and the PCB put back in the key mechanism.
Next piece of this puzzle was to cut a cover for the PCB that would give me room to mount all the ports I needed for this build. Laser cutter to the rescue. Also off camera I cut some wood to mount the key mechanism to. A few straight cuts of 1x3 isn't that interesting. And here the cover is with all the ports mounted. The little hole is to reach the channel select dip switches. Now to make the connections from the cover to the perf board. And with that, all that was remaining is to add software to the microcontroller and it would be done. Except that it wasn't done. Over time, the conductive pads and the key switches have lost some of their conductivity. This made it for uneven inputs across the key switches. I cleaned the contacts the best I could, but it was still not enough to make all the keys perform to a satisfactory level. So I decided to pull off the perf board and change all the pull-up resistors on the PCB from 3.3 kilo ohms to 22 kilo ohms. This did the trick, and all the key switches now work perfectly. All that was left was to button up the pedal controller and give it a test. As you probably have figured out by now, I'm not much of you musician. I think we can all call this a successful mission. I took a key mechanism from an old Yamaha electric piano and turned it into a MIDI pedal controller. Hope you all enjoyed, and thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.